Welcome to Gospel Commission. I hope you're doing well in the Lord today. We want to ask the question today, why is it that Jesus dying on a cross gives us eternal life? We're talking about this in light of the doctrine of limited atonement, the doctrine of Calvinism, which states that Jesus only died for certain men, and that's why those men will go to heaven, only died for the elect. We talked about in the first video in this series, I noted that many people fall into this error because they don't understand the nature of the atonement. So we want to just focus on the atonement, looking at it from different aspects and try to understand what the Bible is teaching so we don't fall into this error or other errors because we lack knowledge about what the Bible says about the atonement. Um, the first thing we want to ask today is we want to look at the aspect of how does Jesus dying save us from death? And so we want to look back to the Garden of Eden and we want to note that Jesus, or that God told Adam, the day you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will die. And so when he ate, he was cast out of the garden, separated from the tree of life. He was condemned to death. We all were born into this world, separated from the tree of life, born mortal, born condemned to die. So in Adam, all men die. So how is, what is God to do in this situation? Because he created man not to die, but to live forever. We could say that he could tell men to repent, to stop doing bad, or maybe believe in him more, or something like that, but none of that would erase the fact that God said mankind must die. God can't take back his word because God's word is the foundation of everything that exists. He is the creator, he is the, the master and the king of all creation, so his word must remain stable. God is not a liar. Whether it's good for us or bad for us, his word will remain stable forever. So what is it God to do? How is God going to give us eternal life if we must die? Let's go ahead and turn to Hebrews chapter 2 and start here in verse 9. It says, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels to suffer death, crowned with glory and honor so that he by the grace of God should experience death for everyone. So first we need to start with the basic fact. Jesus became a human being as a representative of human as a rep representative of humanity he could die and taste death for everyone in the same way adam in his sin brought death on everyone jesus could taste death and experience death for everyone as a representative but then we're faced with the question and this is the question where uh, limited atone atonement comes from and because they have the wrong answer to the question that's why they they trip up and they fall into the error that they do and the question is, if Jesus died for everyone, then why does not everyone go to heaven? So let's go ahead and flip over to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and look at something that helps us understand this a little bit better. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, let's go ahead and look at verse 17. This, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 is written about the resurrection of Christ, and here Paul's making a point. Because some people were saying that Jesus, or that, that we weren't going to be raised from the dead on the last day. And so he's making a point in saying this. Verse 17. If Christ is not raised, your faith is in vain, and you are still in your sins. So in verse 16 he said, For if the dead do not rise, then Christ has not been raised. And then it says, If Christ is not raised, your faith is in vain, you are still dead in your sins. What Paul is pointing out here and, and helping us to understand is that the gospel is not that Jesus died for our sins, and if we believe that he died for our sins, then we will be saved and go to heaven. That is not the gospel. In fact, if Jesus just died for our sins, nobody would be saved. Because Paul says here, if Jesus died but did not rise from the dead, then nobody would be saved. They're still in their sins. So we understand that it's not the death of Christ alone that saves anyone. Jesus dying on the cross didn't save anyone until he rose from the dead. So we need to understand that without the resurrection, there is no gospel. Without the, the cross of Christ, there's no gospel. That's why we have both. Jesus both died and rose again. We need to understand that point. Now let's go ahead and jump over to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4 and look at verse, let's see, Romans chapter 4. Start in verse 24. But also for us, so let's go up to verse 23. Now the words... It was credited to him, were not written for his sake only, but also for us, to whom it shall be credited if we believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. Now I want to note here, this is talking about crediting, crediting righteousness to someone who believes. But believes in what? Believes that Jesus died for their sins? No, it's talking about believing that Jesus is risen from the dead, that God raised him from the dead. Then they will be credited with righteousness. We see the same thing talked about 
in Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 10 says, If we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. For with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, and with the heart man believes unto righteousness. So first of all, what do, what do we confess? We confess that Jesus is Lord. Not that he is Savior. We confess that Jesus is Lord. That is the key center point of the gospel, that Jesus is risen and that he is seated at the right hand and has all authority in heaven and earth. We don't just confess it with our lips because the Bible, because Jesus said on the day of judgment, many will say, Lord, Lord. And he says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? But only those that do the will of the Father in heaven will enter into life on that day. So we understand that calling him Lord, does not it's not just vain words, not just a vain confession, but we must confess him in Lord in, as Lord in truth. And we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead. Not that we believe that he died for our sins. Of course, we believe that. But the main confession of Christianity is that we believe that he is Lord and that he is risen. Risen where? Risen to the right hand of God, making intercession for those that come to him and ruling over all heaven and earth with all authority in heaven and earth. So we understand that the resurrection of Jesus Christ is a key aspect of salvation and the gospel. Without it, we, we would still be dead in our sins. It doesn't matter that Jesus died. If he did not rise, then we would still be dead in our sins. So it goes on here in verse 25, Romans 4, 25. Who was delivered for our transgression and was raised for our justification. He was handed over to death. He suffered death and tasted death for all men because God said, the day you eat of it, you will die. And the soul that sins shall die. And so mankind must die. So Jesus Christ came and went into death. He tasted death for all men. He went into death for us. But then it says, and was raised for our justification. How is it that Jesus Christ being raised from the dead justifies us? How is it that him dying and rising again justifies us? We see it here in Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7, Let's see verse 24 and 25. But he, because he, he lives forever, has an everlasting priesthood. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and he's never going to die again. Therefore, he is able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him because he at all times lives to make intercession for them. Jesus offered a perfect sacrifice to the Father. He lived in obedience to the Father and went to death and tasted death for all men. Then he rose from the dead and now he sits at the right hand of God and he's making intercession for all that come to him. So anybody that comes to him he has the blood of Jesus. He has his blood to present to his father. And we are justified because we come to the risen son of God. We don't come to the cross. We don't come and just believe on the cross. We come to the throne of grace where the son of God is seated, who has given his life for us, risen from the dead and overcame death, and now is seated at the right hand of the father, making intercession for all those that come. So why is it that if Jesus were dead, that we could not be saved? Because then the blood of Christ, the sacrifice of Christ, could not be presented before the Father as a perfect sacrifice. But because he is risen and he has overcome death, now he is seated there at the right hand of God and is able to save those that come. So, Jesus' death on the cross alone did not save anyone. And believing in his death does not save us. But Jesus dying, rising again, and being seated at the right hand of God, and us coming to him through repentance, through faith, when we come to him, then we are saved. We're saved by the risen Christ, the risen Lord. He has authority to save because he went to death for us. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And read a familiar passage. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Somewhere in here, okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Look, all things have become new. So Jesus Christ became a second Adam. In Adam, all men died. Now Jesus came, went into death, came out of death, and now he is a new mankind. He is a new race. He is the new man. If we will come out, if we'll leave the old man behind, if we'll repent of our sin and place our trust in the new man, Jesus Christ, coming into him through faith, we will become a new creature, a new creature, a new creation, a new man, a new creation of God. Those that are in Jesus Christ are a new creature. And it says, old things have passed away and look, all things have become new. So we come into the son of God 
and are identified with him, and so his death becomes our death. We died with him, and now we live with him. And on the day when he returns from, from the sky, he's going to raise us from the dead and give us immortality. Now let's flip over to 1 Corinthians. Well, we read it there in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22. It says, In Adam all die, but in Christ all are made alive. But not all are in Christ until they repent of their sins and trust in Jesus Christ. So everybody dies in Adam because everybody was born in Adam. And so we were all born condemned to death. We were all born separated from the tree of life. But in, a in Christ, all are made alive because Jesus is the representative of all that lived in Adam before. Now anybody that is in Adam can come out of Adam and come into Jesus Christ. But we only receive life in him if we are in Adam or in, in Jesus Christ. So we have to repent and come into Jesus Christ. So it's not just the death of Christ, but it's his death his resurrection and his ascension to the right hand of God as a representative, as a high priest, they're making intercession for us that we can come to the one that has overcome sin, has overcome death. And when we come to him, he's able to save us to the uttermost because he ever lives to make intercession for us by presenting his sacrifice, perfect sacrifice before the father and bringing and pleasing the father on our behalf. So Galatians chapter two, Galatians chapter two, verse 20. Paul says it this way. So I said at the beginning that all men have to die. For God's word to be kept, the Bible says the wages of sin is death, and so all men must die. There's no getting around it. God cannot change his word. If we go into death by ourselves, without Christ, in the old man, we will be condemned forever. We'll be lost, we'll be set up, uh, apart from God forever in the lake of fire in hell. Because we will be condemned for our sin. Because it's not just Adam that sinned. We sinned over and over and over again, rebelled against God, and we are worthy of death. And so if we go into death, we will be lost forever. But Jesus Christ came and went into death, but he didn't stay in death because he had no sin, but he overcame death and is now seated at the right hand of God. And he is a kinsman redeemer. He is a human being that anybody that is of the race of Adam can come to him, trust in him, be brought into him. And then when we go into death, we will go into death with hope, knowing that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and has a victor victory over death. And so we also will be raised with him by his power. This is the hope of the gospel. Jesus died and rose again as seated at the right hand of God. We come to him through repentance and faith and we have new life in him and become a new creature in him. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 says this, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live, I live by in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God. So Jesus Christ comes to dwell in us as we come to him. His spirit comes in us and his life is lived through us. And we're able to overcome the power of sin, not perfectly, but day by day transformed into his image by the spirit of God so that we can overcome sin and we can live in obedience to God. Again, not perfectly, but we have the throne of grace that has mercy and grace for help in time of need. And so here, Paul is saying, I've been crucified. I've died. All men must die. We have died in Jesus Christ. But in Jesus Christ, we will have a victorious resurrection from the dead. In Adam, there is no resurrection. But in Jesus Christ, there is a res resurrection. So we must come into him. Let me use an illustration to illustrate what I'm trying to say and what the scripture is presenting to us here. Imagine the whole human race has been locked into a prison cell. And there is no way to get out of that prison cell. And in this case, the prison cell is death. And it's because God's word has spoken. We are condemned to death. But then God wants us to come out. So he sends his son to come into the prison cell and break the prison doors from the inside. So he comes in, he meets the requirement of death, but then he destroys the, the jail cell so that we can all walk out after him. Some people will remain in the jail cell. They will stay in jail even though the gates of hell have been opened, even though the, the, I mean, the gates of heaven have been opened and we can go into heaven. Some will remain in that jail cell. And so some people, because they're born into Adam, they will remain in their sin and they will remain in death. And when they die, they will be condemned. But others will say, well, if Jesus has overcome death, I'm going into him so that I can come out of this jail cell and I can have eternal life through him. We need to understand the gospel 
is not just that Jesus died for our sins, so believe it and you'll go to heaven. No, if Jesus only died, we are still going to be lost in our sins. Jesus died and he rose again for our justification, is seated at the right hand of God so that anybody that comes to him can be saved because he is presenting a perfect sacrifice before the Father so that we can come to, and we can have life through him. We will go to death because all men will die. But we will be raised from the dead because we are in Jesus Christ and he has overcome death. I hope this has blessed you. God bless.